Hey guys, this is Nod Lammers and Vogue 101. Welcome back, and we just hit 5,000 subs, which is kind of incredible. Uh, I didn't think that we'd ever get to 5,000 when I first started the channel. When I first started it as um, what it what the channel's original name was. Uh, moving forward, definitely, it felt more realistic, and I'm super excited to have hit this major milestone. I'm very excited. Um, for for this and I can't wait to continue to make more and more uh, content I'm definitely getting back in the groove of putting stuff out and recording things I'm actually waiting on a few things to show up in the mail so that way I can get a couple brand new deck profiles for you these are decks I've never posted before so I'm really excited to do that um, and I'm definitely excited for hopefully things to start picking up soon again so that way I can do low tier hero uh, which I'm gonna try and start recording some low tier hero stuff because we did the one low tier hero, but it's gonna I might change the name to uh, to something else, something to do with locals because it is more of a locals thing uh, currently. Or I might just start doing locals vlogs again. That could be fun. But anyways, um, there is a giveaway. We are doing a giveaway for 5,000 subs. We've teamed up with Leather Deck Box uh, on Instagram on Etsy. Uh, if you don't know what he does, he made. I think I've shown this off before. He made this wonderful handmade Cyber Dragon deck box that I have. Uh, I won this in one of his giveaways, so that was super cool. That's actually how we started talking. And we have a very special, uh, as far as I know, this is one of a kind, uh, Invoked 101 leather deck box that you guys can win. Uh, I'll talk about how you can win that at the end of the video, so stay tuned if you want to see how to get the, uh, the leather deck box or how to enter to win. But anyways, uh, moving right along, we do have a QA. I thought that that was kind of appropriate. We haven't done a QA in a very long time. So, uh, so let's get right in. I asked you guys on Instagram and I asked you guys in the Invoked 101 Discord uh, what you guys would like to ask me. I got a cup of water back there because there's a lot of questions. <laughs> but, anyways, uh, let's get on with the Instagram questions. The first question is from, this is from Team NDL, I know this guy, this is Raz. Uh, he says, any plans for 5k? I'm doing it right now. <laughs> uh, ben 10,000 says, what deck would you play if Invoked got hit on the FNL list? Um, I've been talking about that a lot. Um, this one right here, uh, this is Speedroids. <laughs> um, Speedroids is definitely near the top of the list. I really like this deck, I've actually been working on this deck a lot. If, you've, if you're part of the Speedroid Facebook group, you know that I've been posting um, a lot of questions, a lot of... Uh, different ideas about the deck and trying to figure out the best idea for this deck. And I, I got, I like the deck right now, and I actually have a slight variant of it coming up. So we will be doing a updated speedroid list soon. Uh, just once I get some of those uh, packages in the mail, uh, speedroid is definitely up there. And then another deck that's coming in the mail, and I'll give you a, a little preview of it. It's Mech Knights, Pure Mech Knights. That's another deck I've thought about uh, playing Pure. Um, and then the one on the bottom of the list, probably after Speedroids and uh, Mech Knights. Mech Knights is definitely at the top, but Speedroids is right there too. Um, the next one after that would probably be Generator uh, or Eldlich. Generator and Eldlich are kind of tied. But th those are some decks that I would probably play um, if Invoked got hit. Um, next question is, can you come up with a Subterror Invoked list? I don't know how that would work, because you need your normal summon for Guru. So that's kind of hard. Also, I don't know what your invoked fusion would be. Would it be like Magil? Is Magilancia or Magilanica? Magilancia, I don't know. Uh, that's what I've always called them, but um, I think that would be your only real fusion monster you could make, but yeah. Um, I don't think that works. I think it has conflicting normal summons. I think that's a little too difficult. Uh, the last question from Instagram, we didn't get very many on Instagram. We got a lot from Discord though, which is nice. Uh, the last question is the favorite booster set. Um, my favorite booster set? Um, I can definitely tell you my least favorite, it's Breakers of Shadow, because that set, I opened so much of that, and I only got, I only pulled, like, two secret rares. It's all, like, I opened so much of that set and only got two secrets, it's awful. Um, my favorite, I like Savage Strike a lot. Savage Strike is pretty good. 
Fusion and Forces is kind of up there too because it has the Invoke stuff in it. I wouldn't call that my favorite though, but it did have a lot of stuff. I liked Destiny Soldiers a lot too because that had like three decks that I wanted to play at the time. Um, Shining Victories is really impactful for me as a person, like as a player. That set was really impactful for me. It had Crystal Wing in there. It was a set that I remember a lot of me and my friends opening. Uh, I have a lot of good memories about Shining Victories. Um, so I think I'm going to go with that one. I even have the... Uh, Mio actually got me the sneak peek play mat for Shining Victories because it has Crystal Wing on it. And I was like, I don't think you fully understand how much this mat actually means. Because uh, Shining Victories... Like I said, Shining Victories was the set that me and all my friends when we were in high school, we were opening up that pack, just trying to get stuff out of it. And uh, Crystal Wing is my favorite monster of all time. So to have a mat that not... It was coincidence that he was the cover card. Um, so... Uh, yeah, it's really cool to have a mat like that. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the um, for the Instagram questions. Thank you to all, I think it was like six of you, <laughs> uh, for asking on Instagram. Um, so now we're going to go into the Invoked 101 Discord and we're going to check their questions out. Uh, starting off with, uh, what made you call your channel Invoked 101? I don't necessarily know. I think the the reason I called it Invoked 101, I know I was in college at the time when I, when I started and I was playing Invoked a lot. And I know that like, uh, a lot of college classes have like the 101, like physics 101, uh, after it. So that was kind of one of the things. And like, that's why my banner is like a chalkboard. Um, but another reason that I think I called it Invoked 101, if I remember correctly, was because I was going to post videos talking about how to play different variants of Invoked. And that's still something I really want to do. Like, I, like it's two years later almost, and I still really want to do that um, as far as like a piece of content that I want to create goes. I really think that that would be something cool, is showing off the different ways to play Invoked. And I, I'm probably going to get down to that at some point uh, once. I could easily do it on Edo Pro, so if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments below if you're interested on in seeing like basically every version of Invoked that I've ever thought up. Uh, just let me know. Uh, Boba Plebe asks, are you interested in any card games aside from Yu-Gi-Oh? The answer is yes. Uh, one second, let me actually grab my other deck. A lot of people probably are thinking, oh, it's Magic the Gathering or something like that. No, I actually don't care for Magic. It's actually the Transformers TCG. I like Transformers a lot. Um, and when I found out that Transformers had a TCG um, and that some of my favorite uh, characters were in the TCG, I picked up Dinobots. So I play a Grimlock Dinobot deck um, in Transformers TCG. Um, it's all Wave 1 stuff, so I haven't really kept up with it. It's just Wave 1 things, but still. Um, I'm not super into it uh, as far as, like, as, as I'm not in as deep as I am with Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I think Transformers is a little harder to keep up with. Um, but I do I do try and uh, play when I can. I know Mio, we're building her a deck. We're building her a Bumblebee-themed deck. So, uh, but yeah, I do I do play Transformers on occasion. This is the only other card game in a long while that's actually caught my interest. I did play Magic for a hot second, but um, it wasn't the same. It just wasn't for me. This is a question from Selena. She says, if Yu-Gi-Oh! was starting from scratch, which five modern-day archetypes do you think could be used in the hard restart? The thing about that when you say five modern day archetypes, I instantly go to, I think there's five different summoning mechanics. Let's see, there's a Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, Pendulum, and Link. So, and I get, if you really want to, you can include Ritual. Um, I would actually honestly scrap Pendulum altogether and include Ritual. So we're going to scrap Pendulum and we're going to go with Ritual Summoning. Um... As far as, and I'd want it to be good examples, not great, but good examples of all these decks. Um, so as far as like a fusion deck goes, that I think could be really cool in the hard restart, I think Fluffles is a little complicated, but I do think that uh, Vision Hero could be a really cool deck to include, in because this is a hard restart, I think Vision Hero could be a cool fusion deck to include. Uh, especially if you gave them like another vision hero, I think that'd easily be really cool. Um, Synchro, I have to go with Speedroid. I think Speedroid is a perfectly fine deck for a hard restart. It's not a lot of complicated mechanics. It's pretty uh, simple and it's a lot of really good effects. So I'm definitely gonna go with Speedroids for the Synchro deck in the hard restart. Uh, Xyz, I think Gaga. I think Gaga or Time Thief. Uh, both of those are really cool. 
but um, you could also scrap that and say Galaxy. I think Galaxy is a little intense, but I think what I'm going to go with is I'm going to go with like the Automatopoeia guys uh, overall. I think I'm going to go with them. I think that's a really a good choice for that. Um, ritual decks, Shino Birds. <laughs> Uh, I think Shino Bird would easily be the best ritual deck to include there. Um, I, I think that one's... It, it's definitely a kind of intense deck, uh, even like now. Like I say this, because Shino Birds are kind of insane um, when you get them going. They're, they're really cool. And they're really unique um, as far as mechanically goes, which is nice. And then as far as a Link deck, I don't want to say World Chalice. Um... But that might be the one that we go with because that one I feel is the most balanced. Uh, currently, it was the OG Link deck in a lot of ways, so I think I th I think uh, that one. I think World Chalice. Oh, uh, but yeah, those are the five archetypes. I I feel if we were to hard restart Yu-Gi-Oh, I think that would be kind of cool to see them. Next question. Wow. Uh, Deku Skater from the Inst from the uh, Discord asks, "What are your top five most favorite decks of all time, and your top five most hated?" Um, my top five in no particular order. Uh, I like Speedroids a lot. I like Invoked, uh, and that includes like Invoked Mech Knight, Invoked uh, Wind Witch Artifact, uh, Kaiju, uh, Invoked Eldritch a little bit. That's starting to grow on me. Just Invoked in general is that one. Um, I like ABCs a lot. ABC is really cool. I like... I like Cyber Dragons a lot. That deck is really fun. And the fifth deck is always really hard, because there's a lot of other decks that I really like. Um, like, I like Tenyi a lot. I like Samorg a lot. Both of those are really fun. Um, I like DDDs a lot. That's... Uh, and DDD has a really special place in my heart. Uh... So, it's, it's really hard to pin down. I'm going to go with DDD, even though I don't play it as much, but I'm going to go with it. So, yeah, those are my favorite. Those are my top five in no particular order. Um, and then my least favorite decks. This is a lot easier. Uh, Altergeist. I hate Altergeists. Um, I hate True Draco. That deck had weight. Like, Altergeist. Like, oh, and Sky Striker. Those three decks been around too long. Altergeist, I know, is like, ooh, whatever, but it's getting... They just got Multifaker back to three. Why? Why? Uh, Striker was around way too long. That deck outlived its, outlived its privilege. Draco, same, also outlived its privilege. Um, I would include Zodiac, but Speedroids <laughs> had a really good Zodiac for, had a really good matchup when I was playing, uh, when I was playing them, uh, when when Zodiac first came out. So I don't, I actually don't have a big problem with, uh, with Zoo. Um, but yeah, I don't like Altergeist, True Draco, or Striker. I don't like Dinosaurs either. Dinosaurs is... I feel like that deck just has way too much good stuff. Like, I know it's not the strongest deck, but it's one of those things where it's like, dude, come on, get out of here. I don't know what my fifth most hated deck would be. There's a lot of decks that I've been like, wow, that's really dumb. Um, Adam Ancipator right now, I feel is kind of dumb. Uh, but I want to put it on my top ten most hated decks. Uh, I'll include a card I really don't like, which is Block Dragon. That card's ridiculous. Um, but, uh, oh, I also don't like, I don't really like Mermail. I don't like hand loop decks. I think that deck's kind of dumb. Uh, so, so there we go. That, that's just a slot for whatever the format is right now, I guess. It's like, ah, oh, I hate that deck. But yeah, definitely Altergeist. That's a deck that since it came out, I've hated. Sky Striker, I literally stopped playing the game for a little while because of Sky Striker. Um, Draco is just, it overstayed its welcome. I don't like decks that overstate their welcomes, basically. Uh, the next question is, uh, this one's from Mio. She said, if you don't, if you didn't start playing Yu-Gi-Oh! again in high school, do you think you'd be playing it today? That's a really tough question. Um, I think, and I think what it boils down to is if I had a different hobby that required me to go to a game store. Uh, which the hobby at the time before Yu-Gi-Oh! was Smash. Which I would be going to a different game store that doesn't support Yu-Gi-Oh! So I don't think so. I don't think I'd be playing. Uh, but, but I'm also not going to say it's not out of the realm of possibility, you know. Uh, there's another question that says, favorite or best snacks for online dueling? Uh, the quarantine world needs to know. Um, I like chips. I'm a very, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Lay's barbecue chip kind of guy, but I also really like sun chips. I think sun chips are actually really good because they don't, they don't get your fingers like super greasy. Uh, sun chips don't really get, uh, I think a, uh, 
a Subway sandwich <laughs> uh, is also pretty good, depending how you make it. If it's like a really goopy Subway sandwich, I don't think that's very good. But if it's like a like a sandwich kind of sandwich, I think that's that's pretty okay. Um, but yeah, I like Sun Chips. I like Sun Chips when dueling. I think that's a really good one. If Yu-Gi-Oh! never existed and it released for the first time tomorrow, would you play it? Um, I don't know, because I wasn't involved in the TCG world before Yu-Gi-Oh! And now I like know a little bit more about TCGs, and like I said, it depends on if I see it and it catches my eye. Like, there was this game I saw on Facebook called... I think it was called Exodius, and there was a demo for it at the game store, and I was gonna go to it, but I had I had to work, so I couldn't go, which really sucked. I would have loved to do that, uh, but yeah. Um, that was from Scott in the Discord. Uh, someone asks, "What are your favorite anime series?" I like Gurren Lagann, um, and I like Gundam, which you can see all my Gundams up here. Uh, but I like Gundam a lot. I like Gurren Lagann a lot. Um, there's not a lot I, that I actually like. I'll, I'll watch anime like Mio. Uh, she showed she showed me a few that she really likes, um, and I thought they were pretty good. Um, there was one I watched recently called uh, "The Secret Lives" or, or "The Normal Lives of High School Boys" or something like that, and it was just like a bunch of skits. Basically, it was a little like cutaway skits, and they were really funny. And it was uh, made by the same people who did Gundam, and that was really funny. I like that. That was good. Um, yeah, mostly just like mecha stuff. I like a lot of mecha. Uh, what is your most embarrassing or disappointing Yu-Gi-Oh moment you've ever had? Um, I get angry a lot. That's I get angry really easily. Um, I remember one time I was at a regional and I chucked my deck box. <laughs> uh, that's embarrassing to admit, but yeah, I chucked my deck box and was like, I don't want this deck anymore. And unfortunately, that that was my invoked Mech Knight deck. And uh, Mio, she calmed me down and was like, No, you're fine. You just gotta. Uh, so that was that was uh, probably my most embarrassing moment. Um, but most disappointing, uh, another embarrassing slash disappointing moment, like this is probably two of them, uh, my opponent slow played me and I didn't call him on it, and because I didn't, I didn't get my invite, basically. Like that, like, because I knew he was slow playing me, and all I needed was like 10 seconds. Like, legit. Uh, but, and I got real mad, I got angry, like I was like, he was like, good game, and I was like, no. Like, I, I straight up told him, I was like, no, you slow played me. And I got up, and I walked away, and I was angry. And apparently, um, and, like, Mia went over to talk to him, and she was like, she's like, he's not mad at you, he's mad at what And she's like, and the guy who I was playing against, he was like, oh, no, I know, I totally, I totally didn't deserve to win. He totally won. He totally should have had that. So, so that's uh, probably my most disappointing moment. But uh, Nationals this year, which would have been the one I went to, uh, got canceled, so I'm not too upset about it anymore. Um, what was your favorite comeback dueling moment? Uh, anytime playing speedroids. <laughs> speedroids is all comebacks. Uh, I don't really have a lot of uh, cool comeback moments uh, that instantly come to mind. But um, there's definitely some really cool stuff that a lot of my decks have done, like where you see that card. Like I remember there was one time, a lot of the times I'll be, especially uh, at locals, I'll be pushed kind of against the wall and I'll be like, I just need Alistair, I just need Alistair to go through, and I'll draw a Meltdown, or I'll draw Alistair, and it'll go through, and that's what gets me the game. Uh, it's really, it's really fun. It's really cool, stuff like that. Um, if you could change one thing about the game, what would it be? I think I would have more player input as far as the ban list goes, and I know that's a dangerous thing to say, because a lot of players are going to be like, bring back pendulums! Like, but like, you don't need to bring back Astrograph Sorcerer, you, you're fine. Um, I would definitely want to, to but there's, there's a lot of decks that um, on a local level are really strong, uh, like Altergeist, like Dinosaurs, uh, but don't get that higher echelon, like, you know, regional tops and stuff like that uh, as often as the best decks. So I feel like uh, getting some input, at least from like what people are playing at locals, kind of like how Japan has it, because there are a lot of uh, local lists over there I think would be would be good for our game uh, what's a show movie or something you'd like to see turn into a deck uh, I think they actually confirmed like a Gundam Gurren Lagann deck recently and I think we started to see artwork from it so that's pretty cool uh, that would have been my first one um, I don't really know one off the top of my head 
Um, there's a lot of cool things that you can base decks on. I think that a, let me think here. I'd really like to see a, um, an actual HP Lovecraft themed one. Uh, like theme deck like I know Tindangle is kind of HP Lovecraft themed but I'd like to see like a, a legitimate or even or maybe even like an Edgar Allan Poe themed deck where there's like a raven and that's like the Stratos for the deck and they have a field spell that's the pit um and they could literally have a pendulum monster called the pendulum which is really funny like you could do a lot with um with uh with the with Edgar Allan Poe like you could have a a card uh that uh, it has like an artwork of some dude stuck in a wall and then it's um and then it like banishes a monster or something like that or like it freezes the monster that could be really cool uh but yeah i think i think like an edgar Allan poe or real hp lovecraft deck would be nice i'm gonna skip tcg card cast question um uh what makes an event good slash fun for you um one thing I definitely like e winning, of course, like getting getting higher up in the stat line is always fun. But I also think that when the players aren't awful uh, and like noisy and rude, I think that when everyone's there and having a good time and there's like good vendors there and the space is spacious, like uh, the perfect example for me is the Tulsa Regional. I think that that is a great event. I actually had a lot of fun at the Dallas uh, YCS as well, the Fort Worth YCS. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the only regionals. That I, the only regionals I've been to, that the only regional that has been consistently bad is Lenexa. The first one I went to, a lot of players were really rude and I just didn't do very well, so I was unhappy. Um, and then the second time I went to Lenexa, uh, a notable player in the community showed up blackout drunk and he was removed from the venue and he was sitting right next to me and he was very annoying, very loud, and very disturbing to other people. Um, so, so yeah, that one, that regional has always been consistently bad. But... Um, the Tulsa Regional has been very good. Uh, that one's really good. Um, but yeah, it really just depends on like the atmosphere. You know, like if players are having fun, then then I'll then it'll pick up and everyone I feel will be having fun. I like stuff like that. Uh, CB Drawer asks if you could revisit revisit an old deck, no matter how bad it is today, and improve it. What deck would it be? The Speedroids count. <laughs> I'm gonna keep talking about them because it's one of my favorite archetypes. Uh, I like speedroids a lot. I think that counts. I would love to give them a couple new support cards. Definitely a level seven high speedroid synchro that negates spells, and another and like a spell card that searches out monsters. Um, I think that would be really cool. Maybe even a draw spell. I think that would that would help the deck a lot. Um, me and Mio actually created like a custom speedroid structure deck uh, cards. Uh, like we gave them like five new cards for a structure deck, which was fun. Uh, but but. Uh, if we're talking about like old old archetypes, I would definitely like to give uh, Skull Servant a couple new cards. I feel like Skull Servant could be could be really cool if they got something that made them function a little bit tighter, gave them some more consistency, and potentially protected. Uh, like realistically, they just need some spell and trap support. Like that's what the deck is missing. So that's probably what I'd give them. Um, Mio said, "What's one deck that you wish would get new support? Good new support." Uh, the Hickroids. I wish, uh, which this is kind of the same question. Um, uh, I, I think the Hickroids could use some new good support, uh, especially now that Instant Fusion is gone. Uh, I like the Hickroids a lot, and I think that that deck definitely could use it. It's also a deck I've been playing around a lot. Um, R2YGO asks, opinion on Moki Moki? Moki Moki's fine. He's cute. He's, he's confused. Uh, what is your favorite deck to come out of this year or deck that got support to become playable? I think Generator. I think Generator is easily my favorite deck that's come out this year. That can't, uh, or deck that got to become playable. And I know you could say Generator was playable before uh, when their first stuff came out, but I do, I do like Lopter and Har. They do a lot for that deck and make it so much better. Uh, so Generator, Generator is e easily up there. Um... I don't know if there's another deck that I've picked up. I guess M Mermail is the only other deck that I've gotten that kind of became playable because my build was just awful. But Generator is easily the, probably the favorite. Um, I'm thinking of stuff and there's nothing that comes to mind. I know Fluffles are getting more support and Dark Lords are getting support soon, but um, but I think Generator. I think Generator 
Generator currently, uh, I know I know Mio would say uh, Melfi, though. Um, uh, now that you've reached 5k subs, uh, is there anything you'd like to change or improve on your channel? One, like I mentioned, I did want to uh, start doing what I originally planned to, which was show off all the different invoked variants. But I also want to start like branching out my content again. Uh, I was doing that with uh, locals vlogs, but we can't do that anymore. And I was doing, and I started doing that a little bit more with lo low tier hero, which was going to try and kind of overtake the locals vlogs. But now we're not able to do that. So I'm I'm in this weird spot where I want to do new stuff. I may actually start doing some Edo Pro stuff if you guys are interested in seeing some of that. Some Edo Pro replays. Uh, those have been do, those have done okay on the channel before. So if you guys want to see that, let me know, and I'll uh, I'll do that. But uh, there, I do want to. I do want to do some other types of content. So if you want to see me do some something different that's not deck profiles, let me know down below. Um, Owen says, or R two, he asks, "Have you made any friends on your way to five five k? If so, have they had an impact?" I've made a lot of friends uh, going up to five k. Uh, TCG Cardcast, really cool guy. R two YGO, really funny guy. Definitely a really good editor too. He's always sending memes of my face in my Discord. Um, uh, Benji from Legacy Crusaders, I consider him a friend. Um, ben Ten Thousand, he's really cool. He's a really cool guy. I've made a lot. If and if I forgot you, Team NDL, he's really cool to talk to as well. Desper Oak, he's really fun to talk to. Uh, a lot of a lot of people. Basically, there's a lot of guys in the uh, in the Yugi Tuber Alliance Discord. Yugi Nono, of course. I was able to collab with him on my way to five thousand, which is insane. That I was able to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, I never thought I'd be able to message Yugi Nono on Facebook, but I have that ability now. It's weird. Um, it's really strange, but it's also exciting. And I'm super hyped to see where I go forward. I definitely wanna uh, thank, and yes, they have had impacts on the kind of stuff I wanna make or uh, things like that. And I, I know that uh, I've, it's been it's been a two way street. Uh, Owen he started doing locals vlogs. Uh, Cardcast he tried doing a uh, he did like a face cam video, um, and stuff like that. So I know that's definitely been like a, a circular uh, thing. And so I'm really excited um, to have met everyone that I've met on my way to five thousand. Uh, Ducky Skater also asks, what was the first card you pulled that ended up being a lot of money, and do you still have it? I've pulled two Starlight rares uh, so far. Um, and both of those were worth a lot of money. I don't have either of them, but I do have a really cool card. Um, it's over here. Let me grab it. I've shown this card off before. I know I have. Um, I feel like this was the first card I pulled that was worth big money. Uh, you can actually, there's actually a video uh, where I pull this card. You get to see this card be pulled in a video. And that is the 20th Secret Rare uh, Ruin from Japan. This is the OCG 20th Secret Rare Ruin. This card, when I pulled it, was worth about 200, uh, 200 to $300, and I believe it's still worth about that much over there. So it's really cool, it's really exciting to have, and um, I, I would say that that was the first card that I pulled that was worth a lot of money, and I still have. Uh, but yes, I, still, I do still have it. <laughs> um, Shiro asks, can you agree that Altergeist is best waifu deck? No. I hate Altergeists. Uh, someone asks, uh, someone else asks, what's a rule in Yu-Gi-Oh that you think is ridiculous? I think that for a while, for a long while, you weren't allowed to use your phone as a, as a dual calculator. I think that's ridiculous. I also think it's ridiculous that if uh, you can't use your phone for translations. I feel like if you have the Yugapedia app, which is like an app that it's like a card database. Basically, you can Google uh, search whatever card um, in the in the thing, and it'll pull up uh, that card, uh, which is really cool. And it has like a deck builder and stuff inside of it. It's a really nice app. I I don't like that you're not allowed to use that for translations because it always has the most updated text on there. Like I said, it's it's like the database. So um, I think that that's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but Yu-Gi-Oh Nexus, hopefully. We'll come over to the TCG, and that will be our official calculator and um, translator and whatnot. So, uh, another question from Selena. She asks, 
was there ever a time at an event or whatever that you saw someone's binder and, and inside was a card you really wanted so badly and you almost stole it? I don't think I've ever gotten to the point where I was like, yeah, I'm going to steal that guy's card. Because um, I think a lot about how if I if someone stole one of my cards, I'd be really upset about it. Like, I think about people stealing my, my cards all the time. It's really weird. Um, but I don't think there's ever been a time where I was like, yeah, I'm going to take that guy's card. There has been times where I've been like, hey, do you want to trade for that? And we just couldn't make the trade work. And I'm like, man, I really needed that. Uh, but, you know, it, it is what it is. That's what, realistically what it comes down to. It just, it's stuff like that. Um, we got two more questions. We got two more questions. And then, and then that's the end of it. And then we'll talk about how you can uh, win the giveaway for the deck box. Uh, we have one from Almond from the, from the Invoke Normal Discord, which is uh, favorite deck to play for fun. Um, I like, like I mentioned, I talk about it all the time. I like playing speedroids. Speedroids is really fun, but it's, I'm really weird with it. Cause I'm like, I can't play it unless it's like actually done. And I'm trying to like get it to this weird spot where it's like really good. So, um, I've been playing, uh, pure mech knights a lot online. That's a deck I've been playing a lot. And then I play a lot of, uh, ABC. ABC is a deck that I play a lot for fun, uh, as well as generator. I play all, I play those, uh, a lot of those for fun. And the Mio said, what's one deck you wish could become top tier meta for a little bit? Um, the easy quest, the easy answer is Invoked Mech Knight. I love Invoked Mech Knight, but at the same time, I don't think I want to see um, that deck be right there. Because I'm a rogue player, I really like playing rogue, but I think a deck that I'd actually legitimately like to see become top tier for a little bit and just see how that plays out is Cyber Dragons. I think that a Cyber Dragon top tier meta could be really cool because we actually did have like a fairly like cyber dragons were super viable for a little bit which was crazy and like right after cybernetic horizon uh we got cyber load fusion and the legendary duelist set it was really cool and then noxter came out and it was like wow we have everything we need to succeed right now and cyber dragons were actually like a viable option for ycss for events uh which was really cool. Like I took it to a, I think it was an OTS championship. Uh, I failed miserably. It was awful. <laughs> it was, it was, it wasn't great at that point though. But yeah, I think Cyber Dragons could be really cool on a top tier meta deck. All right, so now we got to the moment that probably a lot of you guys were waiting for. How do you win the Invoked 101 Leather Deck Box? Um, we'll probably do the giveaway ending in two to three weeks. So. I wasn't given an exact time limit, but I do have some instructions from Leather Deck Box that I am supposed to tell you about it. Um, let's find out. All right. So things that you need to know about the deck box. This one, it has a belt loop and belt clip. So you have the uh, little uh, carabiner on the back uh, for clipping it to like your backpack or your belt loop. And then it also has this uh, nice little clasp right there where you can snap it around your belt and clip it to your belt, which is really nice. Uh, this one is... 80 cards, I believe, he says. This is an 80 card size, although I have, I've put cards in this. I haven't used it, I haven't taken it to a tournament. It's not left uh, the house since it arrived. But uh, I have put cards in it, um, and it does hold a side deck, extra deck, and main deck. This one, I've squeezed it in there. It is a tight fit, but I've squeezed them in there. Um, he, uh, as far as his store goes, he has different designs. He ha Millennium Puzzles, a design that I always talk about. Like I mentioned, he has... Uh, the Cyber Dragon one that he, uh, I got from him a while ago, and they he does a bunch of different colors uh, for his uh, not only for the uh, the symbol on the deck box but also the deck box itself. I've seen red ones, I've seen brown ones, I've seen blue ones that he does, uh, and all of them are on his Instagram page if you like checking that out. Um, he says Etsy is the best place to purchase them at the moment, and uh, he says that there may be a wait time if you purchase them because they are made to order. So every one of these is 100% unique made for you. And it does have a little nice stamp on the back that shows that it was made by him, which is really nice. But yes, this one specifically, you can win this one. Uh, just go in the comments, comment hashtag uh, leather deck box and make sure that you're subscribed and make sure that the leather deck box is all one word. Uh, we're gonna do the hashtags so that way I can find it all. Uh, super e easily in the comments by sorting. Uh, but yeah, so be subscribed, comment uh, hashtag leather deck box, and comment, let's see, what can we say? Uh, put down your favorite archetype as well. So there we go. Three things. Uh, subscribe, comment hashtag leather deck box, and in that same comment, 
uh, put down your favorite archetype, and in two to three weeks, we'll uh, declare a winner through, we'll do it through either uh, a community, we'll do it through a community post on here, so that's why you gotta subscribe, because I'm not gonna make a whole video just talking about the winner, and we'll also announce it on Instagram, so if you're not following the Instagram, I believe the link is in the description to check that out. Uh, so yeah, so if you feel like winning yourself a leather deck box, go ahead and do that. Very cool custom invoked 101. deck box and if you feel like getting your own leather deck box with a different design on it you can message leather deck box on instagram on i think he might have a twitter but he definitely has an etsy so if you want to check him out it's leather deck box on etsy uh anyways thank you guys for watching uh if you feel like supporting the channel directly there's a few links in the description you can use to support uh the channel as well as joining the discord where we have tournaments every friday uh so if you like doing that if you like supporting the channel uh check those out and i will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.